Yes! How are you guys doing? Are you still as hyped for the World Cup as you were when it started? Because I'm still at 100. Let's go! Wow! It's the very curious news from around my bedroom that I turn into a studio with the amazing Carter Dino! Very curious news, Adam. Number one. Yo, Germany, how do you say lucky in German? And I only ask because you should have had a penalty called against you and had Jerome Boateng red carded five minutes into the game. Okay, maybe it was more like 10 minutes into the game, but whatever. Because once Sweden's Marcus Berg got fouled from behind on a breakaway and nothing was called, and not only was nothing called, the video assistant referee, VAR, decided not to chime in either. I mean, what in the absolute f that is as clear of a goal scoring opportunity as there has been in this World Cup. And these four dudes in a small room with 70 monitors who have to sadly dress up like the referees on the field too, which has to suck for them. Well, they somehow can't get the center referee's attention. And if they did, he waved them off, which what in the absolute f They're trying to get your attention for a reason, center referee. So maybe you should listen because all we want, and this is something that I've mentioned before, all we want is consistency in our refereeing. Is that so hard? Okay, my rant on that is over for now. So as for the game, Sweden did end up scoring a great goal by Ola Toivonen, which was off of a rare Tony Cruz turnover, and then Cruz failed to track Toivonen as well, which didn't look good for him. But for me, it highlighted just how poor Germany's team shape has been now for three straight halves. But after halftime, they came alive and finally played like we all know that they can, like the defending champions that they are. And Marco Roy scored in the 48th minute to make it 1-1 which is awesome for him on a personal level after so many years of being hurt. So I was excited for him for doing that. And then Sweden, for the rest of the time, defended admirably and got some big saves. Well, that is until the 89th minute when, hold on a second. I need a minute to collect myself. I just, I might have to go off again. I just, Sweden were up a man because Boateng finally got sent off for his second yellow and Tony Cruz has the ball out wide, okay? And he's one versus three with nowhere really to go. So he goes towards the end line to hit a hopeful cross because really that's his only choice. And the first Swedish defender lunges to tackle him and misses and gives up a free kick in a dangerous area when he didn't need to. He could have stood him up because he had help. Unless, in fairness to him, he didn't know he had help. And yes, I know it's late in the game and everyone's tired, but his teammates behind him need to let him know that they are there so he knows he has help, so he doesn't have to go to ground and make a foolish tackle. It's just, the whole thing is so preventable. It's frustrating. And then Tony Cruz hits an absolute banger on the free kick to totally redeem himself from the mistake that I mentioned before and win the game and the three points. Though, if I'm being super critical, I thought Sweden's goalkeeper Robin Olsen should have saved it. And yes, I know he's been excellent in this tournament up to this point and in qualifying, but from that angle, even if he got screened a bit, I feel like he should have got a mid on it. Got a cross and made the save. He was almost there but not almost there. And if you watch closely, he took one or two steps to his right just as the ball was about to be hit. If he didn't take those steps and holds his ground, I think he makes a save, but he didn't. And now Sweden and Germany both have three points. Mexico has six on top and South Korea have zero on the bottom. And thankfully for Germany, they get to play a below average South Korea next. So this goal by Cruz is a dagger to Swedish hearts. But as I said earlier, it shouldn't have even got to that point because Germany got lucky not to have been a man down from the start. Very curious news, Adam. Number two. Yo, Belgium, tap the brakes. You scored three goals against a Panama team that you should beat by three goals. Then you put five past the Tunisia team that you should beat by three goals too, which you did since you gave up two as well in your 5-2 win. And you know what? I got two things to say about all this. One, it's not always that easy to beat the teams that you know you should beat and everyone expects you to beat. Just ask Argentina or Germany or Brazil or even my beloved USA in qualifying about how that goes. It's not always that fun. So for you, Belgium, to do just that and beat the teams that you should and make it look easy while also making it look like you're having the best time out on the field, well, that is something to be applauded. So I applaud you. Way to go, fellas. Way to go. Excellent. But two dudes, Belgians, hear me now. You need to save some of these goals that you're scoring for the knockout rounds because you're gonna have that one game where nothing is coming off, where the opposing goalkeeper is having a blinder, and you're gonna need one of your players to pull some magic out of their butt to score, but you're not gonna have any magic left. So my advice to you is to keep some of that magic in your butt. It's great advice, I know. Don't use it all now against inferior teams. And I think that should be a new Warm Ballers t-shirt. Jimmy says, keep some of that magic in your butt until you really need it. I'm feeling like that would be a top seller. 
just flying off the racks. Anyway, with all this praise, I'm showering on Belgium. I do want to take a minute to keep things in perspective because Belgium have played two of the weaker countries in the whole tournament. And yes, I know Tunisia's ranked 21st and the top ranked African team in the whole tournament, blah, 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 blah. But this is just a great way to start a World Cup to get your confidence going. That's the point I wanted to make. But it does make me wonder just how good Belgium really are. And now with it being reported that Romelu Lukaku, Eden Hazard, and Dries Mertens will all most likely be rested in their last group game against England, I believe we're not gonna really know what this team is made of and if they have the goods to go all the way until the knockout rounds. Very curious news item number three. Yo, Mexico, what are you guys eating for breakfast? Because I want some too. You took down the reigning champions, Germany 1-0 in game one of the group stage. And after that, I had surmised that you could possibly have an emotional letdown after such a historic result. But from the beginning to the end of your second game against South Korea, you adjusted your tactics perfectly. You kept a level head and you worked your collective coolus off to win 2-1 and earn another huge three points. Now, I, of course, was super impressed with our whole team and their super prepared manager, Juan Carlos Osorio, but I'm gonna highlight a few names that stood out for me. Like Irving Lozano, also known as Chucky, who followed up his game-winning goal performance against Germany with one of the best all-around performances that I've ever seen from him. He made a couple huge tackles on defense and he saved a for sure goal-scoring opportunity while still having the energy to run at the South Koreans and be a force going forward which led to him providing the assist for Chicharito's game-winning goal. And speaking of Chicharito, it doesn't matter if his right-footed shot hit his left foot before somehow trickling in for his 50th goal for his country because they all count as long as they hit the back of the net, right? Of course they do. Also, I think what I love about Chicharito the most is his ability to stay focused, even if he's not getting as many touches or opportunities as I'm sure he would like because the guy lives by the mantra that the most important play is the next play and I have total respect for that. He just keeps pushing. And then I wanna give some love to Carlos Vela who's one of the few MLS players playing in this World Cup because he stepped up to take and then bury the penalty which gave Mexico the early 1-0 lead and he made it look so easy that I feel like it would be very cool at some point in the future to see what his heart rate was before he was about to take it. So. Here's me wishing that we had those types of analytics, and maybe we will one day, when we get one of those chips that's inserted into our bodies so they know where we are at all times. And speaking really quick about South Korea, I'm not sure what to say. They gave up three goals in their two losses, which were two penalties and a counterattack to Mexico that, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but it shouldn't have been a counterattack in the first place since their player definitely got fouled by Herrera. And then on the other side of the ball, they've only scored one goal and it was a great one by Hingman's son. But overall, I feel like they just lack the quality to be a real threat. I mean, Sweden has a tough time scoring goals and they gave up 15 shots to them in game one and then another 17 shots to Mexico in game two and they were outpossessed by both in both games. And these are just a few of the statistics that prove their inferiority. Inferiority. To prove their inferiority. Inferiority. Uh, inferior. You guys know what I'm trying to say. So yeah, it's been fun to have you, South Korea. And if you're really loving the Swedes, though, they would probably love for you to beat Germany. However, if you're not feeling up to it, then please have a safe flight home. Anyway, what did you guys think? Did Sweden get hosed? 100%. And given Mexico's form, can they finally get past the round of 16 this time around? I think they can. And should we be considering Belgium as true contenders for this thing? Yet to be determined. So let me know your thoughts. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Later.